Hey, I need money by tomorrow. Transfer $30,000 to my account. I don't have any money. How many times am I supposed to tell you this? Don't take me for an idiot, Missy. When I ask for the money, just send it. Don't give me stupid excuses. I know you're making quite a lot from your part-time jobs. And as an adult, you should be supporting your parents instead of spending it on unnecessary accessories. That money is for the student loans I'm supposed to pay in a few years. Can you please cut the crap about supporting your parents? Seriously, what the hell have you and that woman done for me in the last 19 years of my life? If you want money so badly, go ask your wife. Hey now, kid. Don't lash out at your old man like this. Listen, I know you are angry, but I just need a few bucks and I will be out. Promise. $10,000 isn't a few bucks. And what about your and your wife's savings? Did you guys spend it all on coke? What we do with our money is none of your business, brat. Listen, I'm trying to be nice and polite here, okay? Don't piss me off. You know how bad I get when I'm angry, right? You think sitting behind a stupid screen and threatening me would do it you any good? You two have already been in prison for stealing and drug dealing, and if I go and complain to the cops about your shitty behavior, it would take them just a few minutes to come and get your sleazy ass back inside that pit. Hey now, don't call the cops. You are really mean to us, sweetie. We just want to buy a few things for the house. That's all. That ain't my house, though. You two shitheads kicked me out when I was 13. Or have you guys forgotten? Has the white stuff eaten up your brain cells, too? I'm not giving you a single penny. Four years ago, when you guys got out of jail, I paid for everything. I worked my ass off, thinking you two would get better and start living a decent life. But no. All you guys did was spend more on alcohol and hookers, and now you want me to make that same mistake? Hell no! I don't want to have anything to do with you two. I was dead for you guys when I was born, but you guys died for me three years ago. You bitch! How dare you talk to me like this? We brought you into this world. I knew I should have just told Kelly to abort your weak ass, but I regret that decision so badly. Okay, then tell me where Mark is. Just give me his damn number. I need to make her call. Fuck off. You're not getting his number either. That's my little brother, you shitty brat. I can talk to him whenever I want, and I don't need your fucking permission for that. Little brother? Do you even know how he has been doing for all these years? You have been abandoned him. Cheated him even when he was trying to help you two. I was away, you thick-headed girl. How am I supposed to keep up with the latest news? While you were busy making boyfriends and spending money on makeup, I was trying to earn a living for your mother and me. You are so hopeless and disgusting. Please just stop talking to me. Stop looking down on me and give me the damn number. You stole his money, Lester. You stole from your own little brother. You even took his share from the inheritance saying you'd invest in some fancy business. But you didn't do anything. And do you know how he is now? He has cancer. He is alone, struggling, trying to keep up with this world and supporting me as much as he can while you're doing again is asking for money. We don't care anymore. We stopped caring a long time ago. Stay away from us. If you step any closer, I will chop your legs off. You piece of shit. Just you wait. I will make your life even more miserable now. And I will get my fucking money. <laughs> Try me. Because I won't mind killing you either. My history with my parents is full of crap. During the years I have spent living with them, I was living in a nightmare in this shady neighborhood in West Virginia where my parents used to deal drugs and do other illegal things. I don't remember ever being loved by them, let alone being treated as a fellow human being. More than their kid, I was their servant who got trashed around for 13 years. I couldn't keep up with them. I couldn't handle the smell of weed or alcohol and provide their shitty guests with snacks when they dropped by. One day, Mark, my uncle, saved me from that nightmare. I didn't know him properly before. He was quite a mysterious man in my life who kept his distance from his brother. 
but soon I realized he was a kind-hearted man. I don't know how, but when he found out about the situation in our house, about how I was being treated, he saved me from my parents. I always call him my guardian angel, who one day gave me a new life. He took me in, raised me, loved me, and I can never explain how thankful I am to him for everything he has done for me. He even tried to help his brother again, suggested him to go clean, but he was betrayed by him. And a year ago, when I left for college, he got diagnosed with liver cancer. He always seemed so healthy, doing his best to give me a good life with jobs. But that news broke me. I wanted to come back to him, but he never let me, saying I should be focusing on my dreams now. It was only because of him that I was able to finish high school and live a life I could never imagine for myself before. And now it was my turn to take care of him. I'm in college now and away from him, working three part-time jobs, but I won't lose hope. I know his chances of living are slim, but I'm giving my all. I can't lose him. I need to make him proud. If my father tries to get in the way, I will raise hell for him and my damned mother. Hey, Mark, you doing okay? Yeah, kid, I'm doing just fine. What's the matter? Did that old bastard try to reach you? You think I'd talk to him if he did? You're too good for this world. You know that, right? Of course I think that. Sweetie, calm down. What's wrong? Did something happen? He wants money again. Ugh, I can't believe him. What'd you say? Of course, I said no to his face. Atta girl. I know you can take care of yourself. Honestly, I was a little worried when you left for college. I am a strong girl. You know that. Don't worry. Just focus on your health. How's the treatment going? Oh, it's going fine. I'm working out a little. Going out for a walk every morning with the dogs. Keep myself as fit as possible. Hey, that's nice to hear. I will be visiting you for Thanksgiving. Don't tell me you're going to make the turkey too. Of course. Or do you think I am let you do all the tedious jobs? I'm not heartless. I don't know about heartless, but I'm sure worried about the dinner. Ugh, reminds me of the burnt shepherd's pie you made last year. It was tough to swallow. Hey, come on. I was still learning back then. But I promise you this year, I will make the best turkey and shepherd's pie. Believe me, I've honed my kitchen skills ever since my uni days. <laughs> Get ready for a surprise. Fingers crossed. I seriously don't want to die after eating your cooking. Hey, that's mean. And you're not going to die. Yes, yes, I won't. You're here to take care of me after all. So I'm going to hold on to my life till then. You better keep your word. Okay, I guess I'll get some sleep now. You sure you're feeling okay? You're not hiding something from me, are you? I'm doing just fine, kid. You just take care of yourself. Focus on your studies. I know how hard you've been trying all this time to get this far. It's all because of you. If you weren't there for me, I'd have just been homeless. I curse myself every day for being born in that house, but you gave me meaning to my life. Whatever I do now, whatever I become, I owe it all to you. You're more of a mother and father to me than anyone else. Well, oh, kid, I'm so proud of you. I love you so much. There's still a lot to do to make you really proud of me. You've done enough. All I want is for you to live your life to the fullest. Okay? Yeah. Don't die now, old man. Please? Hey, kid. Calm down. We're gonna have Thanksgiving dinner together next week. I'm looking forward to it. Though there's a huge chance we might have to get takeouts later. <laughs> Just you wait. I'll show you what I got. Aye, aye. Now I'll go to sleep. Yeah, take care. You too. See you soon. Hey, bro, how's it going? You finally found my number, huh? Of course I did. I'm your big brother, you know. Always a step ahead. If you're here to ask for money, I'm not giving you any. Oh, so that bitch did tell you about our conversation. As expected. I'm not interested in talking to you. Hey now, 
Don't be so cold to your brother, okay? I heard you're sick. Do you want to stop by here? Maybe get some lunch with us and we can catch up a little? We've been calling some of my friends over. They're really sexy. You'll love their company. I'm sorry, but I'm not interested in your friends or your life. Sure, sure, you are a changed man now. But hey, tell me, are you finally dating someone? Want to introduce me to her? That's none of your business. Don't tell me you're sleeping with my daughter. What? Uh, Les, just fuck off. Did that bitch seduce you when you took her in? Or wait, maybe you made the first move. I knew how you always looked at her, you creepy bastard. That's why you never had a girlfriend. Holy shit, why did I never realize that? How long can you stoop now, huh? Good lord, I'm happy mom and dad are dead. That Jenna is away from you. You and your wife made that kid's life hell. Now you accuse her of this bullshit? You guys have no right to be called her parents. Oh, but the truth is we already are. You bastard, you thought I never knew. I knew you were the one who called the cops on us. But guess what? We're back. Out in the open and ready to ruin that brat's life. Believe me, once you're dead, I'm gonna sell her in a whorehouse and make more money. She's grown into a real fine thing, hasn't she? Must have had her share of fun, but dude, you're a dying man. May have been her first, but she's still pretty fresh, I'm sure. You fucker. If you dare touch her, I'll kill you. But you'll be dying first. Dead men tell no tales. My brother, and you know what? I can send you in heaven before that cancer sucks the life out of you. Even the cops are scared of the gang I work for, so I won't even have any problems getting away with your murder. And if you think they're going to keep her safe, then let me remind you, the world isn't as good and as kind as you. You poor thing. Couldn't even live half of your life, and now your precious niece is going to become my slave again. You may have kept her away from our shit, but that must is born and raised in the hell. She belongs here with us. She is our property. We brought her in this world, and she is supposed to look after our mess. She might have found some sense of security in you, but you'll be gone soon. What are you going to do? Send messengers from heaven for your kiddo? I can't believe how terrible you are, Leslie. You want to drag your child into that hell? Just keep her away from this. She's moved on. Let her live her life. Then send me the fucking money. You ain't gonna need it either way. Heard you stop getting treatments because the cancer is incurable. How much do you want? $100,000. I don't have that much money. I know you got a lot of savings and investments, dude. And you have your connections too, don't you? You've always been the smart kid, right? That's why you were able to keep Jenna out of all of our mess. You're spouting nonsense now. Listen to your brother. I knew your dirty little secret. I also know you want to keep your image clean in front of Jenna. I'm not like you. I was never like you. That's why I couldn't stand you. <laughs> ah, your hero complex is still there, huh? Of course, you were never like me. You got hung out with the bad kids at school. But that shit soon scared the shit out of you. Before it got too late, you turned your back and acted like you were never part of this darkness. But guess what? You still gotta repent for your past mistakes. You're gonna regret it. If you don't give me the money, Jenna is gonna pay the price. Fine. Give me some time then. Two days. Bring it to my house and don't you fucking dare to play smart. Okay. The Thanksgiving dinner went well, but I knew something was off. Mark looked troubled, but when I asked him, he didn't answer. I kept insisting, but he was too stubborn to answer. Moreover, his health seemed to have worsened even more. He had gotten even leaner and couldn't even finish his meal properly. I saw pestering him after a point and just spent the day having a casual conversation. We laughed, talked about the good old days, and then went to sleep. The next day as I was leaving, I heard him suddenly apologizing to me. He didn't understand why, and when I asked him, he just gave me this infamous, you'll be okay smile. 
I cried in his arms then. I cried a lot. Part of me knew this was the last time I was seeing him and holding him close, but I didn't want to believe my words. I'm so proud of you. That was his last words to me. Three days later, he passed away. I was devastated, lost. I knew he didn't want me to see anything like that. I was a strong girl, the one he had always been proud of. I don't plan on disappointing him ever. As time went by, I kept on with my life. It was tough, but I managed. Classes, work, studies, they kept me busy. But soon, I heard the names of my parents being announced in a news channel. Apparently, the two were shot dead in the old house where I used to live before two days ago. It is speculated that the murder occurred could be due to debt issues that a notorious gang they were involved with finally got rid of them. Surprisingly, my name was never mentioned. Neither did the cops approach me for any sort of investigation. I don't know how that was possible, but honestly, that was a relief. They're gone for good now. I was never interested in my parents' lies. I never even tried to learn about them. My uncle always told me to focus on making life better, and I planned on doing that. Ten days after his funeral, I received a call from his lawyer, telling me I'll be inheriting his will. Thirty million dollars in total. It was a huge shock to me because I never considered him to have so much money. But why did he never spend it on treatment? I could have gotten him better, couldn't it? When I met his lawyer for the paperwork, I tried to get more information out of him. However, it seemed like the man had taken an oath to never reveal a single thing about my uncle. It was kind of awkward, but I was able to move past that. Once I was done signing the papers, his lawyer handed me a letter from Mark. Read it at home, he said before driving off. It left me confused, but I did as I was told. I took it home, but when I read it, my heart shattered as I collapsed on my knees, crying. Hey, Jenna. By the time you get this, I'll be gone. Sorry, kiddo. Couldn't stay for long, but I was already a goner. The doctors knew I wouldn't survive, but I requested them to never tell you that. You were already hell-bent to drop out of college. Jeez. But I'm glad you didn't do that. The treatment stopped working after a point, and, well, I don't want to spend more money on my dying body. Honestly, you deserve it more. Don't get angry, please. I had a great life. I made mistakes. I learned from them. I even hated myself at times. But I got my inspiration. I never told you this, but you gave me a reason to live, to become better. I know you always call me your guardian angel, but I've done my share of bad things, real bad things. I'm still ashamed of telling you about my past. I think it's better if you just see me as your hero. But I knew I couldn't protect you anymore once I leave. I hope you got the money. They'll pay up your student loans and rest of your tuition fees. Don't ever stop. You're a fighter. You're an amazing child who deserves all the love in the world. One last thing. Your parents will never bug you again. I think you got the hint, but don't try to look too much into it. You're safe. I made sure of it before dying. Don't you dare feel guilty about anything. Every good thing you have now, you deserve every bit of it. No one will make you their slave anymore. No one will hurt you again. I'm sorry if I crossed the line, but that was the only choice I had left. Take care, Jenna. And yes, start living for yourself from now on. You are free. I hope you soon meet someone great who will love you with all their heart. I love you, and I will always look after you. Love, Mark.